Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. Yeah, this is the first of two viewer challenge videos on this topic geometric mean Pythagorean theorem and right triangles alright now the idea is that you have already studied geometric mean uh, you know how to set up that proportion and how that works you know how to use the Pythagorean theorem to find one side of a missing right uh, one missing side of a right triangle and you also know the altitude of right triangles and how that works with the geometric mean Okay, so it's a lot of assumptions, and I hope that once I go through these problems that it makes sense, and it's just either a challenge for you or a good review. Let's take a look. All right, we're going to focus on problems 5, 6, 7, and 8 here, as you can see, and they all are right triangles with an altitude drawn to the hypotenuse. Okay, in that situation, you have some sides related to each other that are geometric means. Now, let me just do a very quick review and maybe this will kind of help nudge your memory and, and uh, help you out here. In number five, you have the altitude of four. Now, one geometric mean theorem that you learn in geometry class is that that altitude, once you draw it, is the geometric mean between the two parts of the hypotenuse that are created. All right, so you should be able to set up a proportion using the geometric mean and be able to figure that out, out that. Okay, that's one geometric mean theorem. The other is if you have one leg of a right triangle, in this case the X for number six, that side also acts as a geometric mean, but it's between the near part of the hypotenuse, so that would be the eight in this diagram, and the entire hypotenuse. So let me say that again. One leg of a right triangle is the geometric mean between the near part of the hypotenuse and the entire hypotenuse. All right, so if that makes sense and it's a review from something you've already learned, great. If not, you can continue watching this video, but look for my other videos in a series that talk about the geometric mean and the right triangle altitudes. All right, back to these problems. Hit pause and give it a try. All right, number five, again, I noticed that this four is the altitude, and that is the geometric mean, so I'm going to put it in the lower left, upper right positions of this proportion. Um, in a geometric mean situation, the uh, value has to be diagonally across from each other. All right, and I choose to do lower left, upper right. So the altitude of four is the geometric mean between the x part and the five part. All right, so then we have five x equals 16 and divide each side by 5 and that will give me about 3.2 now knowing that that this part is 3.2 I know that when I add 5 to it y must be 8.2 all right pretty simple on that one all right number six Again, we can say that y is the altitude. It's the geometric mean between the 4 and the 8. So we can put it in those two positions here, lower left, upper right. And I put the 4 and the 8 in the other two positions. So y squared equals 32. And then y would be the square root of 32. And I want to simplify that radical, so I'm thinking of 32 as 16 times 2. I split up the radical, and that will give me 4 radical 2. Now that's considered the exact amount, if I keep it in radical form, 4 radical 2. If I make it into a decimal amount, it would be about 5.7 and that would be considered the approximate value. So 4 radical 2 is the exact answer, 5.7 is the approximate answer.
Now to solve for x, notice that that is a leg of the right triangle. And as I mentioned a few minutes before, um, that leg acts as the geometric mean between the near part of the hypotenuse, which would be the 8, and the entire hypotenuse, which must be the 12. All right, so cross multiply to get x squared equals 96. X then is the square root of 96. But we have to simplify that radical. And I notice that 16 times 6 gives me 96. And 16 is nice because I can take the square root of that, which would be 4. So 4 radical 6 is my exact value. And 9.8 is my approximate value. All right, so that is x. Y is 5.7 or so, and x is about 9.8. All right, let's take a look at problem 7 and 8. And number 7, x is 4, and y is 3 radical 5, which is about 6.7. All right, so how do we get that? Well, I notice I don't know anything about the altitude, so I can't use that theorem, but I notice that 6 is the leg, and that's the geometric mean between the x side of the hypotenuse and the entire hypotenuse, which is x plus 5. All right, it's okay that we have x in both places, because now we have x times x plus 5 equals 36. Multiply it out with the distributive property, so x squared plus 5x. And now I'm going to subtract 36 from each side because it looks like, or at least I hope, that I can factor that. When I factor it, I get x plus 9 and x minus 9. Four. Now remember that I have to have a plus and a minus here because it's a negative 36 third term. That will give me my middle term of positive 5x. And remember that that means that in this binomial group, x could be negative 9 or x could be a positive 4 in this group because we set each of those groups equal to 0 and solve. Now negative 9 does not work, does it? Do you know why? Right, because if I put it in my diagram, then I have a negative distance, okay? It just doesn't work out. We always measure with positive numbers. So that's why x is 4. Continuing on, now I'm going to solve for y. And y is a leg of that right triangle. We know the one of the geometric mean theorems tells us that that leg is the geometric mean, so it goes in those two places there between the near part of the hypotenuse, which is the 5, and the entire hypotenuse, which is 9. Okay, now don't make a common mistake the students make of putting a 5 here and a 4 here. Okay, has to be the total hypotenuse. So now y squared equals 45. And take the square root of each side to give me radical 45. Um, see if we can simplify that. That would be the square root of 9 times the square root of 5. And I know I can take the square root of 9, which is 3. So 3 radical 5, or as you can see already, it's about 6.7. All right, let's continue on. One more problem. All right, number 8. Now you can see the answers already. Um, X is going to be 3 radical 2 or 4.2 and y is going to be 3 radical 6, or about 7.3. But let me prove it to you. Let's work it out. Um, x is the altitude here, and that's the geometric mean between the two parts of the hypotenuse. And if this is 3, that must be 6 to have a total of 9. Okay, we just fill in that missing information. So then I put my proportion looks like this. And so x squared equals 18. x would be the square root of 18. 
which of course is 3 radical 2. If I approximate it with the decimal it's about 4.2 rounded to one decimal place. Alright and likewise y again is the geometric mean between the near part of the hypotenuse which is the 6 and the entire hypotenuse which is the 9. So cross multiply y squared equals 54 and take the square root of each side so y would be the square root of 54 which is the square root of 9 times the square root of 6 and therefore simplified it's going to be 3 radical 6 okay and yes I already had that showing so I hope that you were able to work that out and as an approximate decimal 7.3 all right well thanks so much for watching this video and share it with others and send me some feedback if you'd like thanks all right there you have it I invite you to go to my website now mathpowerline.com or email me or give me a call the way I work best with students is live online in my classroom so if I can help you in any way answer some specific questions the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works all right, study hard and take care.